Okay, so this is my network here. It all looks a bit of a bird's nest of wires at the moment. Now, I've got uh, two 24 port patch panels. Really, these should be rack mounted to make them nice and neat. But in this house here, I had a big open hole here where I had like a, a heat exchanger for hot air heating that's now been got rid of and I've got central heating. So basically all this stuff just gets thrown down into the hole because I rarely have to get to it. I only have to get to it if I'm connecting something up. So it's not very often. So I've pulled it out and although it looks a mess, it does actually work and it's all connected up properly. It's just not mounted properly. So uh, yeah, so basically like I was describing before, I've got my outlets all on the wall and they all come back via all these cat6 cables onto my patch panels and they're all terminated there on the idcs on the back so let's see if i can lift that out there so you can have a have a look yeah so all the wires are terminated and then nice and simply i've got my virgin media router here and I've got four ports out the back connecting various things. One of them goes off to this little Roku media player here, which then connects up to all my HDMI splitters that distribute the signal all around the house. Uh, another one connects up. What basically what happened was because I've got quite a few things that need connecting up, I quickly ran out of space because normally the routers you get from your service providers are still only really shipped with four ports. So what I've had to do is I've had to install this little network switch here. This is only a cheap Netgear one. So one of the cables from here will feed into my network switch here and then that frees up another four ports and I've only got one port left spare now. So I'll have to think about getting a bigger bigger switch but at the moment that's still, it's still fine for my needs. And then basically from my Virgin Media box here, it goes off into all the different patch panels to the rooms that I want to connect up. So for example, if this port here 20 is connecting up my smart TV in my back room, I just plug a lead from here into port 20, a little short patch lead from here into port 20, and then port 20 in the other room will be livened up, and then all I have to do is a short patch lead from port 20 into my smart TV. So it's like running a very long lead, like I was explaining earlier. If this was just a really long patch lead going from here all the way to my uh, TV or my computer or my son's Xbox, then it would work absolutely fine. But doing it via the patch panels gives you a bit more flexibility because it means you can shove things like your phone lines down it. Here I've had to put little IR emitters, that's infrared emitters down it because I've got my set top box under the stairs here as well and they need to travel down it. So it just gives you flexibility to do what you want and again it's unlikely that this solid core cable is going to fail. The bit that's going to fail is the flexible cable that's getting trod on and you know like moved around the place and in which case you know you've just got to spend a couple of pounds to get a spare lead and you can your network will carry on working again while if you all had cables everywhere then it would get a bit of a mess. So imagine now I've got 48, I think I've got four, no I haven't quite got 48 because this uh, patch panel is not quite full all the way across but this one's full here so I've got, well it's nearly full, I think there's a couple of empty ones at the end. So for example let's say if I've got 40, let's say if I've got 40 Cat6 cables coming up here, if they were just all terminated on normal little plugs then it would be just a huge, I mean it already looks a mess, but it would be even more unorganized because I would just have 40 cables coming up here and I wouldn't really know what cables what. And you can imagine now if you're in an office block with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cables running, then in the comms room you can't have 500 cables coming up in a big pile because it would take you to forever to find out which one you wanted and all the cables would end up getting crossed all over the place. So that's the reason that people install patch panels because it's a little bit more manageable and it gives you the flexibilities to move things around and stuff. It's just, uh, it's just easier. But again, it is just running the cable from A to B. That's all you're doing. But Hopefully between this setup here and the setup in there that I showed you in the other house, hopefully you'll have a better idea of how to network up your house. So this is where my phone lines enter the property. I have an NTL one here, which is nowadays Virgin Media, and I have an open reach socket over here, which is the BT socket. So at the moment, it's the Virgin Media one, which is live, and I've got a BT plug to RJ45 lead. So this is the BT plug side. 
and then it's just a little white cable that runs along here and it plugs into this side here and this is the RJ45. This is my little quad plate here. So what, what this does is, this goes back to my patch panel under the stairs. So it's pushing the telephone signal kind of backwards if you like, because normally the signal comes from your patch panel to your, uh, your outlets. But in this case, I'm using it in a kind of backwards way because my telephone sockets are not under the stairs. If they were under the stairs, it'd be perfect. But when I moved into the property, that's where they are in the living room. So rather than redoing it all, I'm quite happy to keep them there. And then I've just patched it through to my patch panel. If I was to move to BT, it's no bother. All I've got to do is that. And then every single phone in the house will now be on BT. So it's a really easy way to do it rather than having to get an engineer out and swap all the wires around. That's all you do. You just move it like that. And that's the good point about having your home wired in such a way with all the Cat5 cables everywhere. It's just easy. There's a lot of flexibility when it comes to doing things like that. Right, so now we're at the bird's nest of wiring under the stairs. These are my uh, these are my patch panels here, and like I said, I've got the Virgin Media signal, and it's coming up here on number 13. And what I've done is I've plugged in one of these RJ45 to four RJ45 adapters. So I've got a couple spare here. So all that does is these don't do anything clever. Pin one here goes to pin one here to pin one here pin one pin one. For example, pin eight then goes to pin eight here, pin eight here, pin eight and pin eight. So all they do is they connect up everything together. So they're not like a network switch where you might have your Xbox into this one here and your smart TV here and a PC into here. These are dumb, they don't do anything. They just purely connect all the wires together. I think they used to be used years ago for like an ISDN, some kind of ISDN adapter. Now I have got a box full of these ones still, if anybody wants to buy them. They're probably going to be about uh, probably going to be about ten pound, including the postage, just to the UK. But as you can see there, all the pins are connected to each other. But that's ideal for telephones. This is exactly what you want for the telephone system. So you plug one end in here. Yeah, just a normal RJ45. And now what will happen is I will have dial tone on every single one of these ports here. So for example, if I wanted a phone to go upstairs, I would just plug in an ethernet cable into here, and then I would find whichever empty port goes to upstairs, and I would plug the other end in here. And that then would present the dial tone on the outlet upstairs, and then I just need to plug in a, a BT to RJ45 adapter, which I'll show you in a minute, and then you would just plug a normal phone in, or your fax in, or whatever, you know, for your skybox, whatever you need to plug in. So it is really flexible. So here, I've only actually got two phones plugged in because I've got one fixed line, a corded phone, and then the other phone is just a decked phone, like a digital phone, and all the handsets work back to the base units. And nowadays, you don't really need many phone points around the house. Some people will still use a fax, and some people might have their skybox connected to the telephone line. So basically, that's how, uh, that's how I've got it set up in this house. So when it comes out here, it's got two patch leads that come out of it, and then they go into this one, this one here, number seven, and number two. And they correspond to the different rooms. So I'm just gonna show you the rooms where they come out now. Hi, so now we're in the kitchen, and this is where I've got one of my phones connected. And it's connected via a PABX lead. So this one has an RJ45 on one end, and it has a BT socket on the other end. So if I unplug the BT phone, you can see there, that's a standard BT socket. If you're watching this in other countries, then you will be able to plug your phone lead. If you've got an RJ11, a small square lead, they will fit into the RJ45, so that will be fine. But in the UK, the BT plugs won't fit into the RJ45. So we have to use these little adapters. Now, I use uh, PABX, or they're often called PBX adapters, or you can use a master adapter. These have a capacitor in them that allows the phone to ring. Again, this is only relevant in the UK because some of the old UK phones don't have the capacitor built into them. Most of the new ones do, but some old phones won't. So to make sure all your phones do ring, you need to get a PABX or a master adapter, not a secondary adapter, because the secondary adapter doesn't have any components inside and there's a chance your phone won't ring. So uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically one of my outlets. And then I've got another outlet in the next room. And here we have the other adapter here. So this is a, another quad plate RJ45. 
adapter plugged in and this lead here, this grey lead goes over to my fixed corded phone. What I forgot to mention was that if you were to install your master socket where you have your patch panel, so if you were to get BT or Virgin Media to install it under the stairs, then there's another way of connecting up your phone lines to it. So what you can do is you can just get one of these quad adapters or you can get a double adapter or you can get like a triple adapter which is slightly taller. You plug them in and then this is might actually be an easier way of doing so let's say if that was mounted on the wall over there then you would just get your BT lead to RJ45 lead and you would just plug from here BT into whatever port you want to liven up in the other room. So you could have four BT to RJ45 leads coming out of here, go into different ports on your patch panel and then you can have up to four phones livened up which is probably more than enough. Right, so here we have a, an example of the telephone wiring in this particular house. So we have our master socket coming in here. This one has the Mark II OpenReach VDSL plate attached, which then feeds the router. And the, uh, as far as the telephone extension is concerned, if we pull out the faceplate here. So now by doing this, we've disconnected all the wires in the house. Here's your test socket here. So that's where you'll be plugging in if you ever had a fault on your telephone line. Uh, well, actually, if you ever had a fault, it'd be best to unplug the VDSL faceplate and do the test socket on the actual NTE5, just in case the VDSL faceplate ever went faulty. And uh, here you'll see we'll have uh, blue wire to number two, orange wire to number three, and the white blue wire to number five. In this particular instance, this wire then goes up to feed. It goes up along here before the Cat5e cable in, and it feeds this little BT... 78 junction box up here and what we have is we have one wire in and three wires out so we've got two at the bottom and two at the top there so that's one wire in three wires out so uh, that's going off to three different extensions now we wouldn't have been able to connect three extensions to here because each of these little IDC connections only takes two wires so that's why you're going to have to put a junction box up there, a little BT78, or you could use crimps and you could crimp the wires together in the back. So for example, two wire, if you use a three wire crimp, you could crimp two wires onto a spare bit of wire, and then that then, those two wires are joined onto one wire, which you can then push to the front here, plus your third wire. So then you would only have two in the IDC terminals here. But you know, it is a nicer job, I think, to do the BT78. I will do a video on using uh, jelly crimps to actually allow you to connect three or more wires to the front plate here. But if you have a look here, you can see you've got the blue wires connected up the top, the blue wires connected up the top, then the white blue, and then the orange, and then these go off to the different, the different rooms in the house, to the different phones in the house. So in this particular system here, you can see that the phone line has been kept separate from the Cat5e, but in my particular house, I've put the phone lines down the Cat5e wiring. So this is a slightly older fashioned way of doing it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It works very well. And it's the way that it would have been done by BT a long time ago, or even now if you were to get BT in because they don't deal with the network side of things, then they would still be doing a similar setup to here. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you the back of one of the telephone sockets, just so you get an idea. So with this one here, we have a nice bit of slack because it's a wooden floor. So under the floorboards, the, the, all the slack's been pushed down under the floorboards via the bit of conduit. So it's a nice job here. And if you have a look, you can see one of them is the feed. And this is daisy chain. So we've got two cables here. So one of the cables will come from the junction box that I just showed you, the BT78. And then it's daisy chain to another socket in the front room. If you can have a look there, we've got blue to... You can't see because it's the wrong way around, but... Focus in. You've got blue to two, orange to three, and white blue to five. There's no need in terminating the other wires. Some people do for neatness, but it's just as neat just to coil them up like that. And if you can see, there's two lots of wires in each IDC terminal, pushed right the way to the very, very bottom to make a nice, good contact. Like so. Okay, so that's an example of daisy chaining. That's from when you go from one socket onto another onto another rather than star wiring. So at the BT junction box, the BT78 I showed you earlier, it's star wired. So it goes to that one point and then star wires off 
but on this particular socket here it goes onto the socket and then daisy chains onto the next one. Okay. Okay, one little tip, a uh, bit of a fussy one this one, but when you do your screws up, try to do them vertical or horizontal because it just has a slightly nicer finish. All right, so here we have a real working example of a TV distribution. This is just used for free view. It's quite a few years old, and also it's uh, basically it's a DIY one. This is a, a lab gear, lab gear amplifier here, a sort of thing that you would get from Argos and B and Q. You know your kind of high street shops. But uh, you can see it's got one, one in, and then four out. So it splits the signal to four TVs around the house. And this particular version here uses a coaxial plug but the one you'll see in my house actually uses the F-type connectors, which you will see here. You know, they're the screw, the screw one here. Okay, but this one works fine. So uh, on this particular one here, it is just using normal, the, the cheaper coaxial cable, but they had a problem with the shower pump upstairs on one of the showers. Every time it kicked in, it basically knocked out the signal to the TVs. So they've replaced the down lead, so that's the, the, the cable from the aerial down to this particular booster under the stairs. They've replaced that with like a CT100 grade cable. It wouldn't be CT now, it'd be like WF for WebBro, or it'd be TX100 for Triax, or PF for Philex. So, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the one with the copper core in the middle, and then with the copper braiding as well. Now, some of you might be wondering what this little unit is here and I've got my uh, friend Paul with me, he's the guy that owns a house. So uh, Paul, what is this little uh, metal unit here? It's a variable attenuator. You control it with the screwdriver at the bottom. It's because the signal from the aerial was actually too strong. Oh right. It's a good signal area here. Oh okay. So you just, you just, uh, you can just back it off the signal until um, you stop getting the, I was getting a bit of pixelation on the screens. So that's just, removes that. so that's like the same as if you have a weak signal you get a pixelation, but if your signal's too strong as well, you can also get the pixelation. I believe so. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. And what sort of aerial did you, uh, what aerial have you got here? It's, it's actually a Group A aerial because we're fed from Crystal Palace Transmitter here in London. Uh, um, it's better to get a group, uh, properly grouped aerial as opposed to a wideband one. Right. As it's Pacific to Transmitter, all the information's available on the internet. Oh, okay. The wide band is like a one size fits all, so, but you, you do get some degradation signal. Not that that would have been a problem here, but in many areas it can be. So the wide band would be something you get from like just the DIY stores because they just sell the same thing all over the country. Exactly, it saves having to have the different stock in different areas. Right. Hi, so here we have a coaxial socket. That's what it looks like, and that's what you will plug your coaxial fly lead from here straight into your TV. And uh, the back of it they're really simple to wire up. You just need to strip them back, make sure you have the braiding under this clamp here. And there should be a little screw sticking up here, but it's been sheared off. It was probably just slightly over tightened. And uh, yeah, you just put your central conductor through and just screw down onto it. This is quite basic. Just make sure none of the braiding here touches the middle, middle bit here. Okay, otherwise it will just short out, it won't work. But that's it. Right, okay, so this is the TV distribution in my house. Excuse the mess, all these things are normally thrown down in this big hole here, but I've had to yank them out just to uh, just to show you how they work just for the video. So uh, it not, doesn't normally look this messy, but basically these are the F-type connectors that I was talking about earlier. They're like the screw-type connectors, so they're different than the TV coax plugs that you've seen in the other house, but these are F-type connectors and they look Basically, they look like that. That wire will need cutting down just a little bit. But uh, yeah, so this is my this is my uh, amplifier here, and as you can see, I've got my cable that comes down from the uh, down from the attic. So basically, I've got a I've got an aerial, and it goes into the attic, and uh, from there, it then comes down on CT100 cable. So this is the CT100, and it goes into this amplifier here. And on this particular one, there is eight outputs, but I've only got uh, one, two, three, I've only got five connected at the moment, so I can have another two, sorry, I can have another three TVs connected to this particular one. And it just works well. Okay, hope you found that useful between this and the other house. Hope you have a little bit more understanding now of how to connect up the TV points in your house.
Take care. Bye now.